Welcome to Cut the Bull, an insightful podcast which addresses the news of the day and the cultural issues plaguing our society, bringing logic and context to these topics and discussing solutions too real for mainstream pundits. Now, here are your hosts, Charles Love, Shamika Michelle, and Wilfred Riley. Coming at you. I want a million fans, so I need a million I'm gain another Hello and welcome to Cut the Bull. I am Charles Love, alongside my co-host, Shanika Michelle and Wilford Riley. And our guest this week is Ben Irby. He is a political commentator. Ben, well, Benji. I said Ben. Benji. Benjamin. Welcome Benji, to the show. Ben, ben. Oh, it's all me. Hey, how you doing? I just keep shortening to just B. Welcome, B. Right. Welcome to the show. Um, You are have a lot of opinions, strong opinions that you like to voice. And we're going to talk about a couple of things here, but I figure why not just come out the gate swinging and talk about, you know, the um, issue that is somewhat growing, but you would argue that it's only growing uh, kind of superficially, but let's talk mm-hmm. about reparations. Can you okay. uh, start by just telling us why you've been writing about that so much? Um, I've been writing about it because I've been following like a lot of the, you know, reparations talk and I follow, you know, a lot of the uh, black, you know, quote unquote reparations leaders, like people like um, Tariq Nasheed and Yvette Carnell, whatever. And, and like I, I've been following them for a while and I keep hearing people talk about reparations, but it's like no one's counting votes. No one's talking about something that can actually happen or that can actually work. It just seems like this is like, you know, something to kind of like dangle in front of you know, black people. I had initially written my first article on my Substack about reparations, um, you know, and, and basically what I was talking about was I was actually counting the votes. I was like, okay, how can this thing that we're pushing as far as reparations in California, whatever that, you know, Gavin Newsom is pushing that he's not really pushing, especially now um, that he's thinking about running for president. Like, why are we putting these things out in front of black people that are just not true? Like, I, I there were four questions I had in the articles on my Substack, benjerby.com. Um, the first question was, you know, why would the party of the poor, you know, the Democrats always the party of the poor, the poor, the poor, when do this to the poor, 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 poor. Why would these people want black people to be rich? It may, they already have the black vote. So why would they want black people to be rich? That makes no sense. And then also, if they were going to do reparations, then why didn't they do it when Obama had the super majorities in Congress to do it? They could have done it 20, 2009, 2010. No dastardly white Republicans would have stopped it. So why, why is this a thing now that Republicans are, uh, are that Democrats are out of power? Um, you know, in, in throughout the whole Congress, and also um, the school choice as well. If Democrats are against school choice and against giving Black parents thirty thousand dollars to send their kids to a you know private charter, even an Afrocentric school, like you know Dr. Umar could have had ten schools by now with that type of money, um, then why would you think they would give you five million dollars reparations? It's like the 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 things just don't make any sense. And and what what hurts me is when I see Black people that are in the reparation space and they say things like, oh, well, you know, we get reparations, I'm over my business, when we get reparations, I'm de-. and it's like, this is not happening because at the end of the day, there's no political advantage to either party to do this. And things don't pass because, you know, because the argument's like, oh, whether well, we're owed reparations or not, owed. that's not even the argument. Like Ukraine is not owed hundred billion of our dollars, but Ukraine has bipartisan support. This reparations push that they're doing, I say it's disingenuous because they've made it so anti-white and so like, we hate white people. And if you hear the rhetoric of the people who push this, there is no senator in their right mind who, who is in, in control of a whole state. Even, I mean, even, I'm talking about Democrats, Joe Manchin, John Tester, um, Sherrod Brown, all these people are going up for re-election in 2024. They would never in the million years vote for this. So it's like, if you're not making something that can pass the votes, then you're wasting everybody's time. Right. You know what I mean? And that that was my point. And I, and I and a lot of black people were mad. I knew they'd be mad about it. Oh, you're a coon. So I have my coons back here, my raccoons, whatever. You know, God, <laughs> I take that with a grain of salt. So, you know what I mean? Who gives a damn about that? But I knew they'd be mad about it. But a lot of black people got it because it's like, you may not like me. He's a conservative. He's a Bush Trump. He's a coon. Da, da, da. But the facts are the facts. You know what I mean? Like this, it, this doesn't make any sense. And I, I'm not saying that there aren't things that should happen for black people. There shouldn't be a reparation sort of thing, but this like, we're gonna give you five million dollars. Like that's not happening. I actually wrote a second <laughs> article talking about a reparations plan that actually could get the votes. So I'm not just speaking outside of my neck and not having some sort of solution. I'm not a Congress person, obviously, but I am saying this could be like a framework to be able to get 
bipartisan vote to try to make something happen. Okay. Um, ultimately, let's, I do think there are things we need a black community. All right, I let's think hold off on that. You're gonna just run off the yeah. whole show. <laughs> And I'm sorry. Else I'm so, you know, y'all gotta stop me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and just I'm passionate record, about this. I didn't even notice it before. Now I can't unsee the coons. But Will, uh, what would you like to say about the opening there, my friends? Yeah. Well, I, I first of all, I will say I like the raccoons. Um, that's one of the first things I noticed. I actually didn't know whether the guest was a conservative or a liberal for a second and i thought this might be a joke like okay if i'm gonna come on this show i'm gonna get as many raccoon calendars as i can so on but those are those are beautiful animals man but no i mean i i think that from a practical kind of poli size standpoint i agree with benji like the the prac there are a lot of practical problems with reparations and i mean i've written about this too i'd rather hear the guests talk about some of them but just like the idea of giving five million dollars per person to a black kids household for example i mean the usa is more than 10 percent black that's you. You'd be talking about a sum of money that's equivalent to five hundred thousand dollars for every other person in the country. Where are you going to get this money from? What's the reaction going to be from poor whites, Hispanics, Italians, Arabs, everyone else in the country if they see their black buddies at identical income levels just receiving millions of dollars? I can't think of anything more likely to start a race war, a period of ethnic conflict. You know, it, it just on and on, like. One last point, like the black white wealth gap, black people in America are not doing pathetically badly in 2023. Black white wealth gap, if you eliminate the top 1% of households, is like $70,000. So when that's per household. So when people throw out things like everyone should get 10 million bucks, it's just sort of people are pulling these figures completely out of their ass. Like there's no logical calculation. Like if you were to say, okay, the wealth gap is 70K, and we understand that probably at least half of that historically is due to racism. Over a period of 20 years, can we space out $40,000? Can we seed money that to black businesses? Like, I would actually listen to that. I'd listen to what you're talking about. But it seems to me mostly just to be activists that aren't that smart saying foolish, exaggerated things. Um, and I, I guess if there's a question, like, I think that the reason the Democratic Party in particular is saying this undoable thing is because it provides just another chokehold on the black vote. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's that's, that's kind all of it's for. Yeah. Well, that was actually going to be kind of my question to you. I mean, do you do you think that these proposals are sincere? I suppose you already you already kind of said this, but no. in terms of what we've heard so far, California, the one point two million for every black person. What is is there anything there or if we're going to talk about this, do we need to totally redo the whole thing? Well, well, first of all, it, the, the the money part, the money giveaway thing is just not real. I'm sorry. Like, there's just that's just not going to be a thing that can happen. And, and what a lot of people do when people were fighting me tooth and nail, because I got into fights with Tariq Nasheed and Yvette Carnell, same time with this whole thing or whatever. They're fighting back and forth. But the thing is that at the end of the day, they, you know, people who are for the reparations thing, they compare it to, um, you know, 1988 reparations that the Japanese got from Reagan. But when you look further into that, you'll see that that was only... Twenty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand people, all forty three years after the fact, and all those people were actually in the camps. Like we're talking about five million dollars for ten million people, for twenty million people, a hundred fifty years after the fact. And if you do that math, that is a hundred trillion dollars. The U.S. budget for all of twenty twenty two was six trillion. So where are we getting a hundred? Like there's like this, and, and what, what makes payment plan mad about it? Payment plan is. But yeah, okay, yeah, uh, we can put that layaway for real, for real. <laughs> what makes me so mad about that is that like they think that we as black people are so dumb. Yes. That we don't and I and I think that a lot of black people underneath know that it's BS, but it's like because of societal pressure, because they don't want to be called a coon, because they don't want to get made fun of, they won't speak up and say, like, you know, this kind of really don't make no real sense at the end of the day. And it's like I feel like the Democrats are really playing us like idiots. Because anybody outside the black community gonna look at this and be like, we can't afford that. And even looking at Gavin Newsom in California, Gavin Newsom is only doing this because he wants to run for president. And he realizes that the South Carolina primary is now the first primary instead of it being Iowa. And they know that's where you're going to get a lot of the black votes. So let me try to put your top heavy on the black issues at first. Then I can moderate by the time a couple of Super Tuesdays come. It's all political. And that's why I don't I don't appreciate you're using 
the black struggle and the black narrative to try to play us like idiots. You right, know what absolutely. I mean? Like, this actually gets, you with, this gets no, into no. a very quick follow up for my question, which is just with a lot of this stuff, like racism is the only cause of any disparities between groups, this kind of stuff, the reparation stuff. It. It seems obvious to me that it's not true. And Benji, I think you kind of tipped your hand on this. But do you think the people saying it, like people in the Biden administration, know they're just lying? But what they're doing is they are the only only really only thing anybody said in the Biden administration was um, Korean Jean-Pierre was asked about this. Right. And what did she do? She deflected and threw it back to Congress because they know good and damn well it's never going to pass Congress. So it's like we put this reparation thing around and then once we get the vote, then it's like, okay, well, oh, the Republicans, oh, sorry. Uh, da, da. That's why, like, when you get to the point of, like, well, Obama could have did this, then everybody gets quiet. Like, if y'all really wanted to do this, you could have done it. And the, the big, bad, white Republicans couldn't have done anything about it. And they know that. They don't want to go to the truth of the matter. And my thing is, like, yo, just stop. It's not as though Black people and Black communities don't need things. Actually, the whole country needs things, to be honest. I mean, look at Appalachia. Look at the white folks there. They're actually way poorer than black people are in the hood. Actually, if you want to be technical about it, and there are more white people on welfare than there are black people. We used to say that as a point of pride back in the 90s, but we just became full on victims every day. Black folks, you say back then, well, it's more white, that's the only line. Well, it's more white people on welfare, so I'm trying to play us. Now it's like, we're like this ultimate victim thing that they're teaching the young people. And it just concerns me just as a citizen, as a black person, don't try to use my skin color like I'm dumb and to try to play me. I was just telling Shamika that um, I was watching a Dr. Umar Johnson, another, you know, quote unquote, black leader the other day. And he's talking about, in, in, in reference to that whole Ebony K. Williams thing, he was like, oh, well, you know, she's trying to push the Eurocentric point of individualism and put yourself by your bootstraps. Like that, that, like that's a white thing. So black folks, so we just can't do nothing. Like we can't do nothing on our own. He's like, where are the community solutions? I honestly feel, and people are gonna be mad at me and call me a coon for this, while my coon friends are here to back me up. I don't believe in this idea of a black community. Like you're like, at the end of the day, there is nothing, there is no one solution for 40 million black American people. We are not all the same. Like one thing I like about white people, we can learn from white people, a piece I'm working on right now, is that white people delineate, this is gonna be controversial, but I guess I'm in the right place. White people delineate their white trash and their people who are, you know what I mean, who are upperly mobile. Everybody black ain't gonna do right. Sorry, everybody black ain't trying to do the right thing. Every, so it's like, we have to go as individuals, as families. I'm gonna lift myself up. How about I, I gotta give you another time out, Benji. I gotta yeah. give you another time out. Mm. Because he, I mean, he's flowing, he's good, but I mean, my poor Shamika's not gonna get to speak. I keep trying oh, to go to him, we can't do that. But then you're <laughs> giving us so much and so many things I wanna say too, but I just gotta ask a follow-up question about Umar Johnson, just for clarity. What's he said? So it sounds like most of the people dogpiled uh, uh, Ebony Williams, rightfully so. But it sounds like he did it, but he did it for a different reason than everybody else did. That's what it sounds like you're saying. He said that what, what everyone else was saying, she was putting people down because she was. He. It sounds like you were saying that his point was that she was uplifting and and and, and lifting up this, what, what they call as whiteness, right? You know, um, like the people who say In being on time and, be, and following agenda and working hard is whiteness. He was saying the same thing. He was saying, I got a problem with her, but it's because she's acting like we have to, you know, live up to this sense of whiteness that is achievement. Is that what he was saying? What was his argument? Yeah, basically he was saying that individualism and, you know, doing for oneself, feeling that you can, you know, quote unquote, pull yourself by your, up by your bootstraps is European individualism. And he's like, where are the, the, the community solutions? There is no one solution for 40 million black people. You have to but, decide for yourself if you want to do right. Like we, like, it's like, if we're even with- But, like, he, but he didn't have a problem. When we look at, huh? I was gonna when say, we look he at, for example, a- like, he didn't have a problem so much. Like it's like he had a problem with her doing the whole like bus driver thing, like calling people, saying they're him, all dumb. Like, on... He didn't have a problem with that. Right, right, it's right, so, right. So, but his issue is more so that she's trying to push this individualism. I mean, even looking at you know black people, for example, like what happened with George Floyd? Horrible, bad, terrible, terrible. Not you know, not for that at all. But what the media does and what our black leadership does is they make it seem like oh well, you know, if it could happen to George Floyd, it can happen to me. I am not George Floyd. I am not a slave. I am me. You know what I mean? I'm not passing counterfeit 20s in the supermarket. Now, I'm not saying that that 
was meant for him to die, obviously. No, Chauvin was wrong. Chauvin was in jail. Thank God for that. But it's like they have to put every black person in that situation that we wouldn't normally be in. Like, why is it that police brutality, which is bad, no one's here for that, terrible, horrible, let's reform police, all that good stuff. But why is that the number one issue of black people as though every black person is being stopped by the police? Like, like, like why are taxes not our issue? Why are gas prices? Why does every other group of people in this country get to think about financial needs, but a black folks always, who's less racist and who said this 85 years ago and who did that and who... Like, I'm just tired of that narrative. Like, my, my thing is like, what is the future of black people in America? Are we going to be doing this slavery thing in, you know, 2300, 2400? Because we're about to lose the country to China. Like, for real, for real. China take over, there'll be no reparations because they ain't going to care about your slavery. They ain't going to care. None of that. If we lose this country, all of that's out the window. So it's like, what are we doing as black people to secure our future as Americans? Because we are Americans. We're not something else. We're not Gambian, Angolese. We're not Nigerian. We've been here for hundreds of years. My family still has land in South Carolina that we've had since the end of slavery. We are just as much a part of this country as apple pie and baseball. We've been here longer than most of the white people in this country. So when are we going to be Americans, Black folks? That's my question. When do Black folks decide to become Americans? Shamika, would you tell Will and, and Benji that we, uh, we want that check? Listen. <laughs> I mean, I'd take it too. <laughs> right. I'm sure if it's a real thing, but we know it's not. It, right. That's it's my not. thing. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I definitely think it is something that they do to control Black people and have Black people, uh, you know, it's pulling their strings. You know, if you constantly think, oh, this person is fighting for reparations for us, well, let me give this person my vote. And I am really just tired of watching Black people run behind the whole reparations thing as if that's going to just completely change your life when I don't see it happening either. Now, if it did happen, which is why I don't argue because I haven't done any type of research on it, I'm cashing my check, okay? I want my check, give me big bills. So, I, but I, I totally agree that I think it's just an argument that the Democrats use to control Black people. And as far as Benji talking a lot, I want y'all to know that we talk on the phone at times. I can take a bath. I can cook dinner. And Benji is still talking. So I am used to this. When he gets fired up, this is just what it is. <laughs> I, had, I had a short conversation. Well, luckily for me, it was just via text. But I was like, man, he's still going. He's still going. He's like, <laughs> he's got a lot to say. But he does. I got to I got to be play devil's advocate or at least defend them a little bit and say on the political part. Benji, you said politically there's no it's D DOA and they're not going to get enough votes. But isn't the argument that. There's been a small group of people, like you say, out there, the Eidos people, that Cardell and some others, right? And then it kind of grew a little bit, but it's always was kind of, even within the Black community, it was a minority group of people uh, fighting for it, right? And so they're, they're fighting for it. They're, they're not getting any traction. And then they got the perfect storm, the mix of COVID and white guilt. And now we got jars, this cases of jars of white tears all over the place. There's an endless supply of of white guilt, of shoe shining, of all this kind of stuff out there. So somebody was smart enough to say, I don't know, this might be the time. So everybody's considering it now. So maybe they're just trying to soften society up where they can get a large enough a percentage to say yes, and then a large, uh, a large enough percentage of the people who think no to say, like they did with Obama, just vote for the black guy so racism can be over. Just give them the checks so they can shut up. And maybe they'll just get lucky and be able to thread that needle. Maybe that's their goal. But at the end of the day, we all know that they're never going to shut up. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that would have been a nice idea. But Obama ruined it. See, they could have done if Obama came in, did this, it would have been done. But at the end of the day, this is it's bullshit. I'm so, like, at the end of the day, when you look at the black population, our population is waning. We are letting in two million Hispanics 
a clip. In my in my article, I mentioned the fact that you look at the Congressional Black Caucus. The Congressional Black Caucus don't just represent Black folks no more. You look at my representative here, Frederica Wilson, with all them funny time hats. Half of her constituency is Latino. So she can't come out and be like, I'm doing it just for Black folks. F the Latinos, because honey, you'll be up out of here. Same thing for Maxine Waters, half of her people are Latino. Same thing for, um, what's her name in, in Houston, who's now going to run for mayor. I forgot her name. But the Congressional Black Caucus is not representing Black people anymore. We're not a Black and white country. Reparations would have made more sense 60 years ago. But what did LBJ say? He's going to keep you niggas voting Democrat for the next 200 years. That would have been the time during the Civil Rights Movement, during Obama, there were opportunities for that. But now it's like this is a sideshow that comes along when Democrats are out of power. And it's even more ridiculous when you're, when you're, you're promising people $5 million. Like, this is like, it annoys me because it's an insult to our intelligence. There is hey, no way in H-E double hockey sticks this will ever happen because the money, there's not all the money in the world is not $100 trillion. Right. So please tell me how this happens. It doesn't. And they know it. And it pisses me off because stop playing us like fools. Will, Will, uh, he makes a good point there. I want you to talk about this piece in it. Yeah. Even if you give them the argument and say it's deserved, it should happen. We can find a way. We could have found a way 60, 50, 40, 20, 10 years ago. Isn't it ironic, at least, if not intentional, that his examples of his representative and the two others, that the same people who are saying Blacks are mistreated in this country and we need to rectify that are wholly endorsing illegal immigration, like completely, like doubling down, crying at the border. I mean, like right now, in the last couple, I don't know what she's tweeting right this moment, but in the last two or three days, AOC has been tweeting about subway train lynchings and 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 racism and you know just going on and on about you know this racism how blacks community uh, are treated. But every group of illegals they allow in minimizes the chances of getting the things that they need for a community. I'm sure you all saw the videos of my people, Brian Mullins, Natasha Dunn in Chicago, having they're having another press conference tomorrow, by the way having a press conference saying that dropping hundreds of migrants in their neighborhood, right? The neighborhood that's already limited in resources, the neighborhood that, they, that the politicians run on saying that I, I want to be elected so I can help the people in these underserved communities. And then they're dropping more people with need in those communities. So people get this, but their elected officials are the same ones on the one side saying, we need to help you. I'm for the reparations, but then bringing in all the people who are making things more difficult and making it harder for that to pass. Are, are you just asking? Yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's I mean, so yeah, there there obviously is a conflict there. I mean, I would say simply and obviously I mean, I'm at least on the center right politically, but like almost every modern kind of lib dim policy, I would argue, has been pretty bad for black people. I mean, if you look at the pullback on policing, like something that I found from my latest academic paper that's just damned insane, but the black homicide rate, murder rate doubled since 2012, since Trayvon Martin, the start of that era. And again, we are now looking like the most criminal group in the country because the white murder rate hasn't really budged. Normally, when you see crime go up, it goes up for Hispanics, poor whites, so on, as well as blacks. Here, because the whole BLM focus was pulling the cops back in black communities, that didn't really happen. So the black murder rate went from the teens to like 30 per 100,000, the El Salvador numbers. The white murder rate stayed stable. It's like four or five. So, I mean, that that's a thing that happened. That's a policy that was extremely bad for black Americans. In fact, white murder rate, absent everyone else, probably about three per 100,000. Uh, illegal immigration. I mean, Charles, I'm totally with you. Yeah, like, you know, great, hardworking people, religious, all that. But you can't just take, what, three million people a year and migrate them from one country to another country without massively lowering wages, causing ethnic conflict. Like, no one even disagreed on this until about 10 years ago. Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, they used to sound like us. Bernie you Sanders, know, the, the, the the famous oh, yeah. socialist, openly said, I want all these programs. I want the, At, the health care. I want that. But let's be real. The only way we can do it is if we mm -hmm. close the border, because we can't do that. Hey, and absolutely. Right. And like the Sierra Club used to say that as well. Like if you're an environmentalist, you need to keep the yep. population down. You can't have all these young fighting men coming in, mm -hmm. walking through the desert. But OK, so basically, I think we all agree on this. Like a lot of these policies, just like not mainstream union stuff but like lib dem policies terrible for black people often 
But I think that the way the Democrats or the way the left really distracts from this is kind of this reality versus fantasy twofer where they say, OK, you can debate some of this stuff. You can debate fiscal policy. They always say, we'll debate with you guys on taxes. But we're the people that are fighting the oppressive racism. That's the mm -hmm. real problem in the black community. The mm -hmm. real problem isn't crime. Mm -hmm. The real problem is the racism that causes crime. So I, this is this is my question for Benji at the start of this. Like, do, And I'm, I'm not sure of the answer. Do they believe this really or not? But either way, it's a great it's a great tool to have. Like we're going to hunt ghosts for the next 40 years and you should vote for us because we're the best no. ghost hunters out there. No, they don't believe it. What this is, and I write about this as well, is that this is the thing at, at this point as black people, oh, well, even we might even get into that. It, the crime rate in a black community, it's not, see what they do is there's this whole, I hate the team dynamic, all black people. That's why I said, we need to start delineating, separating black folks, like which white folks do. We need to start doing that. Because at the end of the day, they say like, oh, you know, all black people are this. So if there's a situation in which there's crime in a black community, they say it's black and black crime, like that's all black people. That's like one third of 1% 1 of one third of one. It's the same black people that we keep letting in, letting out, letting in, letting out. But their plight becomes the plight of the whole of black people. And it's like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, these people, God bless their souls as individuals, because I'm a believer in individualism, you know, as white as that mm -hmm. is, Dr. Umar, sorry. You know what I mean? That's their individual issue. What happened with them and that cop was bad, but they don't represent every black person. But this every is black thing person about is being hunted down. Part. Huh? But every black person is being hunted down. LeBron Which is told. absolutely not true. But it has to be, at, because LeBron, I think LeBron the, James and Gary Clark Jr. know better than you what, what's happening. They're wealthy and they're being hunted. So what makes you think you and I are being hunted? LeBron right. James is the most know. terrified 6'10 at... man I've ever seen. He came out with another <laughs> statement like this the other day. Like, <laughs> I'm afraid at... to leave my house. Like, brother, yes. come on. Yeah, wait, 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 your house is enough community. money to buy a gun, LeBron. Right. Your house in the white community, Will, because you there's no way you're buying that house in the majority black community. If you look yeah. at the Washington Post database, it shows how many black people are killed as opposed to white people, and more white people get killed by the police than black people. It's just that what they put out there. And this is the thing about the electoral numbers, because the thing is that, that this at this point. Black, the black vote on the on Democrat side means much less to actual Democrats. Because think about it, most black people we live in urban areas that are all blue. So even if even if a couple of us did vote red, it ain't really gonna change nothing at the end of the day because even the white people around us are super, super, super blue. What it's not about the black vote number that they want because our numbers are dwindling. What they want is the black narrative. Them having the most of the black vote gives them the black narrative. So you have one group of rich white people, rich liberals, they can fight rich concerns by saying, oh, well, you know, the black people vote for us so we can see for black people and you're racist. Because I, when I went to Trump Tower, I had a couple of meetings with some of Trump's people or whatever. And one of the things I talked to Laura Trump about, one of the things I talked to um, Brad Farscal about and advice they did not take, which they should have, because Trump be president right now, they took my advice was at the end of the day they are trying to craft narratives so if we are to say that black people have all of our support and we support black people then trump is racist because at the end of the day the 2020 election was not even was lost because of cheating but it also was lost because the narrative that trump is racist so all the unfair things that happened with the vote counting with you know the fact they held the hunter biden story with the mar a lago rate, all these unfair things that happened that would never happen to obama anything like that Nobody looks into it. Nobody cares because Trump is a racist. So that's the thing. Like They have to keep that narrative going. My advice to the Trump team is that y'all need to hit these racist narratives where they are. Hit them up front. Stop hiding. Stop whatever. Like, stop that. Like, hit, hit, hit. Look, Trump can come out and say, yo, I'm not a racist. I'm not a white supremacist. Look at my policies. Where, like, where is this coming from? Because at the end of the day, we need to, to be going as, as conservatives on black platforms, not on Fox and Newsmax, because that's not what black folks are, and have the real conversation. Okay, great. We're, we're putting these policies out. We believe in conservatism. We believe in lower taxes. We believe in closing the border. We believe in bringing jobs back so that black folks can get jobs, the jobs that we used to have. We had a whole great migration from the South to the North for industrial jobs that built the black middle class that the Republican and the Democrat Party have sold to China. Trump was the first person who actually illuminated that for me. That's what that's what brought me over to Trump. When Trump started talking about China and trade and real shit and started answering the questions in my mind as a young black person, like, damn, 
Why are there no good jobs? Why can't I like, make any money? Like, why every time I call somewhere, I'm hearing somebody Indian or Chinese, or whatever, on the phone? Like, they don't want Black folks to see that. I told Laura Trump in Trump Tower, look, what Trump is doing with China, Black folks need a message on that. They need to understand where do Black people fit and make America great again? Because when I look at make America great again, I don't think about slavery or anything like that. I think about the fact that my father, who turns 80 in, um, in July, he worked at, you know, he didn't have a full high school education. He dropped out of school at 16 because his father died. Came to New York, got an apprenticeship, worked as a plumber for the state of New York, worked there for 40 years, and now lives off his pension in Virginia Beach. That America does not exist anymore. So we talk about make America great again. It needs to be back to a time where you can go as a young black man, young white man, young whatever, come out of high school, find a job doing something, building something, making something where you can support a family and not be a baby mama, baby daddy, because all that comes from finances. Like, we're not talking about the money. The only time we have a money conversation is this reparations crap. And outside of that, then it's George Floyd. And it's like, God rest his soul, but I'm, but police brutality and police interaction is not the end all be all of my life. Like, I have, I put gas in my car way more time than I'm stopped by a police officer. That's just <laughs> not the end all be all. My, I'm not a criminal. I have no criminal record. That's not really a worry for me. I'm not worried about, oh God, the police are going to kill me. Like, that's Ridiculous. And we put this fear into Black people and it makes no numerical sense. That's why we can't have the real conversations that we need to have. Well, we talk about the issues that you had something you wanted to say, Will? Yeah, just to, as a comment, I think something Benji just said there is actually extremely important. Like, And you mentioned this earlier, man, where you said that for every other group, you're expected to look at a whole range of issues when you go in and vote. Like, what's the price of gasoline? Just basic stuff. These are called market basket issues. Uh, Jane and I made a steak dinner the other night. It cost like $49. I mean, like almost everything in the store has increased 30, 40 percent. There is a war going on that could become nuclear. Getting to the point, if you're a voter, you're normally expected to consider all this. With black people, there's for some reason the expectation that the allegation of racism should trump all of that. And I remember thinking about this with Trump, like when people there was this whole debate about whether Trump had ever said the N word. <laughs> like people were looking for tapes of him in an elevator. <laughs> did he you, did he tell an ethnic joke while playing golf with a diverse group of buddies? This is a real thing that happened. And I remember thinking, like, if I'm voting Republican this year because I'm voting market basket as opposed to, you know, whatever, kindness to the poor. If I'm making that decision, I wouldn't really care whether an effective Republican president was personally bigoted. Right. Right. And it, it's all this stuff that keeps coming up. Like right now, Trump is on trial for alleged sexual assault. Um, Civil that trial. Act, What's up? Yeah, civil civil oh, no, but that, that's the thing. Now, like if he were criminally convicted of rape, that's something that people would consider. But a lot of the things that are being brought up there, like did the former president refer to a woman as a bitch? Like you have to ask yourself as a as a voter who could be taxed ten thousand dollars more based on who wins the election. Who cares if he did? This exactly. is the same thing with like the Matt Walt, like these text yes. messages that are. Yeah. So I it's an excellent point from Benji that as a voter, you should think about a bunch of things and only black Americans, maybe a few white liberals would be restrained from voting for the best candidate because of the assumption that he doesn't like immigrants or black people or something like that. It, the question is, how much that affects your life? And they voted for Joe Biden, of all people. Like, I can see if there was like some like and this is what I was telling Brad Pascal when I was in the meeting with him, like, you're running against Joe Biden. So, like, if you can't squeak this out through the racist shit, like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, seriously, like, this is antebellum Joe, like, prime Bill Joe. You know what I mean? So we've got that <laughs> up against, like, the Central Park Five thing, which makes no sense because the Central Park Five was, okay, he may think they're guilty. Okay, but Central Park Five, again, born representation, is not a proxy for every Black person in the country. I don't give two shits whether Trump thought they were guilty 30 years ago. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The matter? other thing is that they were so guilty. Stupid. The only question was whether they participated in that like that was literally their defense. Being, yeah. That was their yeah. defense. I can well, prove I did not because I was yeah, wild. Their, their and defense was that five, they were in the wilding they, mob. They were fist fighting, but they might not be rapists. I just want to get that out there. Like the Central Park Five are just wildly but they unsympathetic, also even by got BLM millions standard. of dollars from yeah. the state of New York. These men are billionaires. One of them married the booty model, delicious. They ain't thinking about your black ass. They're not paying for your gas. Like, why the but, fuck? But hold you, on. Why is this? An, an issue for you trying to vote. Like, well, you were saying you something. About taxes, is that true? Choice. Delicious Who's married one of the Central Park Five? They don't, you don't know them. 
You don't know this is a problem. You don't know these people. You don't know them. So why are they a number one? When I have issues or issue, uh, the arguments with liberals, first they go, oh, well, Senator Mark Five and Trump is a you don't know these people. Who gives a shit? I well, hold on. I'm gonna come back to you because because what what you're saying, Benji, and what Will said, I, I was going to say say something before Will added that piece, and it just adds to the to the proof, <laughs> Shamika. I'm laughing because I was going to say something too, and then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this but this is uh, maybe you'll remember when I say this, but ba basically. You know, what you're saying is totally true. And it's just another example, because otherwise people would just say, these are just two right wing successful black guys who don't really care what the real black people talk about. Uh, I have a friend, in fact, it's a friend of the show, but, but she's not there yet. So I won't say who, who's writing a book. So she's meeting with people to talk to them, you know, going around, you know, uh, Selena Zeno style and just talking to the people. And she sent me a message like, Charles, is this common? I'm kind of confused. I went and I'm talking to these people and I talked to this uh, woman Black woman, right? Blue collar worker. Everything she says is 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 in line with Republicans, right? She's like, I don't think the handouts help, right? So I don't want that. I don't like what's happening with the illegal immigration. I think just down the line, like five, six, seven things. And so she said, "What well, uh, would you ever vote for Republicans?" She's like, "Oh God, no! I would never do that." And, and she didn't really press her because that's not the point. But she's looking like, "I don't get it." I mean, nothing against Democrats or Republicans, but if everything you believe is in line with what the Republicans believe, how can there be such a disconnect that you say you will never right. vote for one, right? And so, and that's what happens. And I don't know, Shamika, if you know people like that, but, but what they're saying is true. But at the same time, Benji's right that you should be able to talk about these issues and vote based on your best interest. But the others will tell you that, you know, if you say I'm voting for a Republican because 50 cent, right? I don't want to vote for Republicans because I don't want to be, what did he say, 10 cents or whatever. Oh, you need to vote your best interest. Well, how do you know what his best interest is? Because right. they can fall back and simply rely on race. And you fall, say, well, what if he might have said race, uh, the N word one day, then what are you going to do? And then you just fall in line. So obviously that's a problem for the Republicans that they're going to have a hard time overcoming, right, Shamika? Yeah, and also if you talk about somebody like 50 Cent, then if he says, well, this is what's best for me and my tax bracket, he's looked what at the some of type of traitor, you know, to the Black community because, well, there's so many more of us that are not in your tax bracket. So, hey, you're supposed to vote against your best interest for us in the community, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's it's like constantly going against them when you try to say, uh, vote for your values. I had a woman when I, you know, had a problem with me voting right. And I said, well, what about the gas? And have you seen the, the high food prices? And this woman said to me, well, it doesn't matter because Trump is racist and, you know, Jesus will make a way. So I was like, well, Lord have mercy. You know, now you're going to depend on Jesus. But just a couple months ago, your side didn't know the difference between a man and a woman. And we know, like, where where do you stand on this whole religious thing? Like, sometimes I just want oh. to take the back of my hand and smack them across the face because you don't even know whether you want to be religious or not. But now, because I'm saying, well, you know, look at what's going on. Jesus will take care of me. Okay, but Jesus got you working third shift right now and you got kids at home. But whatever. But wait, wait. I got. But, 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 I mean, but, but wait, if, wait, Benji. Before you stop, Benji, stop. Before you get twenty minutes down the line. The the, the 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 one thing I want to say that's funny about that though, yo, don't don't just dismiss it and make fun of her. Okay, Jesus can make a way. Jesus can make those who believe believe Jesus can make a way through everything, right? So why can't Jesus make a way through the racism? He can, he he can. can only make a way for gas oh, prices, but not racism. I, right. I have something for that. It's so funny you say that um about the races i got into an argument with a religion about that too um the woke christians they kill me but back to what you were saying shmeek about this That's about important. um 50 cent in the tax bracket so again why would democrats want to put you in 50 cent tax bracket make that make sense. i gotta i gotta admit when you wrote now, that, that that does was nothing like, for that them. was the but best back point. to the back to the because then you're not gonna my parents are right right because my parents are ministers and you know i'm very much you know clued into obviously you know growing up in church bible all that good stuff and i remember i was having an argument with this girl online and i was like you know because i have a thing about white supremacy i don't believe in it 
I believe death and life's power of the tongue, all the people talk manifestation, all this new age stuff. So I don't understand how you're so manifestation, you burn this stage, you new age, you all that. But then out of your mouth, you're talking about white people are supreme over you. There is not a white man born to a woman supreme over me, supreme over this. You know what I mean? My Bible tells me and my mama told me, greater is he that's in me than he is in the entire world. You know what I mean? I can do all things in Christ strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. So how can you say out of that same mouth that you believe in Christ, but then white people are supreme over you? And I had this whole argument. The girl was like, well, I don't care how much Jesus you got. That ain't going to save you from white supremacy. These people are lost. They are the and, white You know what I mean? At the, in, at the end of the right, day, they are I the say white the Republicans, supremacy. there's only certain, there's other things too about public outreach. A lot of Republicans are trying to like, pander and my thing is like every black person ain't gonna be republican you gotta have a certain mindset if right. you if you're on that you know there's got to be community solution we ain't gonna get you if you believe that that reparation thing we're not gonna get you we need people with common sense i say about we could probably get like a good 30 to 35 on a good day if we do things right which is fine because at the end of the day victim is, is very sexy is very attractive. It's a panacea. It answers all your questions about your own life. Because even me, before I switched to the right, I had to get real with me and be like, you know what? Where did you fuck up your life? Where did you not do the shit you weren't supposed to do? Where was your credit fucked up? Where was that time you quit that job? Do you want to go out and party and do that? And a lot of times people who want to be victims want to blame white supremacy for everything in their life. They don't want to own up to their self because again, individualism is, you know, European somehow. Like that's like a trait of like white people or something. Like we just don't have that. So, I mean, that's the thing. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't want to look inside. So for, you know, for Republican outreach and things like that, I don't I don't see us getting ever getting a majority of black people. My my goal is like 25 to 35. If we can do that. That's enough to change the world right yeah, there. That's about shake all you need. Up. It's but, never going to be more than 50 because the victimhood is always going to be too attractive to fall into. But Shamika, I have to because I finally disagree with Benji now. Benji said he doesn't uh, uh, believe in white supremacy. Has he not met Michael Eric Dyson? Has he not seen Joy Reid? <laughs> You're a white rich supremacist. You're rich. a white supremacist if white is your measuring stick, right? You made it a point earlier. You said people used to say they're more white people, right? More white people on welfare. It's like whenever you say that, you know, well, this is bad in the community, it's like, well, that doesn't seem like it could be better, but it's not bad. Well, it is compared to whites, right? It's like <laughs> everything they do. It's based on the measure stick of white measurement of white because they think white is right. So well, they were the white people. Uh, yeah, they're all. Oh, you they're meant white white supremacy. You meant white white supremacy because I, you know, like uh, I think this morning on the View, um, was it Anna Navarro? One of them said, "You don't have to be white to be a white that white supremacist." And I'm like, "No, no." And the right started beating her up. I'm like, "No, she's right. Just look at all the African Americans. They're all white supremacists." <laughs> I mean, that, that's yeah, the thing. The Wokies, are. I find, they always tell me about how we're trying to act white, we're trying to be white, but you're going here saying that white people are supreme over you, and they're talking about white spaces and white guild and white... They're obsessed with white people. I don't talk about white people as every other word out of their mouth is white supreme, white supreme. I grew up in a time in the 90s where we made fun of KKK on Jerry Springer and Ricky Lake, and oh, we laughed at these people because they were hilarious. They have now, the Wokies have now elevated these people into something that they are not. Like, they didn't even elevate them. They created boogeymen that don't exist. They 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 carved them out of their little Prius. For the, and then they say, see, look at that. You see that went by? That was a white supremacist. You right. really they, look they, like they a 99 Prius. That this girl, um, Triologic, did on YouTube. And she actually went to a white supremacist. There was, a, there was one in like Noonan, Georgia somewhere. She went to the KKA rally. Big deal. They had all the feds there and gates and da da da, da. 10 people with sheets on. There were more protesters, hundreds of protesters for 10 people with a sheet. Like this is ridiculous, but they have to do this to keep black people sectioned off because as long, like, as, long as we're sectioned off and not looked at as a part, or look at ourselves as a part of America, they know they got our vote over here and they can have us over here. George Floyd, George Floyd, we got the blacks. Now we got them over there. Let's go fuck with the Latinos. I always say it's like, we have like a fucked up relationship like a male female relationship with Democrat parties. Like we're the woman and they're the man. And we basically, as, as a, imagine being a woman telling the man, no matter how much you beat on me, slavery, how much you cheat on me, gays with, with the gay agenda on Obama and DACA, I ain't never gonna leave you. I ain't never going nowhere. Then why would that nigga buy you flowers at that point? Why well, would the Democrats do anything for us year. at this point? Because we've already said that we're never going to leave them. So they are going to look for newer constituencies. That's why they're filling this country with Latinos. Like, this is not hard. But it's like, if you say this, you're a coon. You're a coon. They use. That's why I do the coon thing. And I go so hard on it because they use that word to keep Black 
people from speaking, from thinking. Black folks, when I, I started this whole journey as an Uber driver in 2016, and I would red pill black people, especially black men all the time. And when you get black folks alone and just talk real knowledge and real shit and logic, we get it. But it's the societal pressure of, I don't want to be called a coon. I don't want to lose my friend. And I'm not going to lie. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? For me, I'm built for it. If you ain't my friend because I'm a Republican, bitch, fuck you. Are you not my friend in the first place? That's me. But a lot of people can't do that. You know what I mean? Think about, Shamika, how many friends you lost over the years. How many people that don't fuck with you no more? Now I didn't have, have any friends. I was going to say, Shamika didn't have no damn <laughs> friends. What are you, what are you talking but you know what about? I mean? But there's many of us who did. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's a hard thing. What would you thing. have done people if you had a friend? Really deal with that like that. Some people can't deal with the societal pressure. Like the, side, the peer pressure is a real thing. And I think that's what keeps a lot of black people from thinking and looking outside and questioning. We don't even question Obama. We should be mad. Nigga, where our reparations at? You was in office. You could have gave it to us. So y'all mad at me, but you're not mad at Obama? Like, how does that work? But it's like, we're not allowed to question anything because of that COO N word. That's why I make fun of it. That's why I embrace it. Because like, okay, you're gonna call me a coon. Okay, and what what else you got? You still ain't getting no reparation. So well, what, so, what so, else is? So Will, let me like let's question. talk real talk. Is the problem Will is the problem that they didn't elect an actual black? Mm, Would they have been no. better off if they elected an actual black guy? I well, mean, first of all, that. I mean, I, I, so there there's a lot there. I've actually heard. Brothers is the phrase that comes to mind, just like black men I know say this, like Barack Obama's half white and half Kenyan Lord. So he didn't have the right position would be one take on these black, these ADOS issues. The real yeah. answer to that, though, is I mean, that's funny. It's an interesting topic. I want to hear what Benji says. But the, the reality is, if you elect anyone president of the damn United States and they look and see what the debt is. They look and see what the feasibility of getting reelected is. The idea of giving like what activists are currently demanding in California is two hundred million dollars per black person. The idea of doing this is is not feasible. It's probably not going to happen. Something that no one's mentioned, by the way, is like when people start getting tricky with reparations like they did in California where they're saying we don't just tie this to slavery, we're tying this to racism. There, there's no reason that other large other groups then couldn't ask for reparations. Right. Like Native Americans have the best case in the country. I mean, you know, Jews are a group that, you know, has mentioned this before. Just going on down the line, women could ask. Women, women didn't have substantial rights until the 70s. It's California, so, the Cambodian boat people. Yeah, but that, exactly. The Vietnamese boat people, the Japanese, like America has a long, bloody history. I would say slavery is worse than most or all other things that have occurred. But that's not the justification that's being used anymore. And even there, the Indians would have a fight. But anyway, no, I don't I don't think it matters who the president is. Right. I think if you get into that office and the elections are over and the time for fancy talk is over and someone asks you, hey, can you give 200 million dollars to everyone in my group the the baseline is going to just be no i mean that so that i don't really think that the race of barack obama had a lot to do there barack obama by the way from what i've heard from people that have worked in or near that administration actually hated american race hustling that's the one thing where that that ethnic background may have come into play like he was not a big fan of the al sharptons and so on it was just like when you guys describe benji and charles that unhealthy relationship between the democratic party and ethnic or black communities like what do you do? I mean, those are leaders of a community that gives you 90% of the vote, like they're coming to dinner. Right, right. You got to just let them in. But then the other side of you're giving everybody big dollars. There's one other piece that we have to add too. There was the, the, the situations where they're so targeted, everybody nationally complained about it because it looked so big. Headline, you know, I think that Evanston was a good one. Evanston gives, you know, Blacks millions of dollars because of, um, you know, mistreatment in housing. And then when you actually read the article, it was like six, when, when they went through everything that made them eligible, it was like six people. So, so if you're going to go around and, and draw a fine enough line to dig down yeah. that was someplace it's where the government really like it, did screw somebody and they owe this money, most people will say that's totally fine because it's not reparations for Blacks, it's reparations for John Black because John Black was ripped off by the city. Nobody's going to complain about that. I mean, but that's not but reparations when, when, right. when a small group of people get their property back. But individualism is white. We have to think of what, are, right. as Dr. Umar says, what are the collective solutions? Right, so you got to give everybody in city money in order to give them their money Every back. black person, where you know, it's like herding cats here. Like, there's just no way in which that, 
Can that, now, this is the thing. I do say this because I don't want to just say like reparations, man. There's like no other thing. I wrote a second piece, a much longer piece, as we know, on you know an actual reparations that can work. And what I say in that is that it needs to be something that's forward looking, forward thinking. Everybody's trying to be an amateur, um, you know, historian and say, well, back in 18, times a continuum. We got to figure out something that's going to be able to work moving forward. So one of those things that I say in trying to think about a reparation moving forward is the fact that, look, we have to decouple from China. That has to happen. Like, that's not even something we can put. We've had our fun. All projects have their fun getting money off China. It's been a great ride. Everybody got rich. But guess what? We about to go on a nuclear war coming up. And we're going to have to start making shit back at home. So if you cared about Black Hebrew question, Black Caucus, I would say, you know what? Those jobs, those factory jobs, those fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 a year jobs that Black folks used to have, let's make sure we get those factories back in my community. Let's work with the taxes to make our community accessible for that. The same way like when Ikea, Ikea opened in, um, and I know this Ikea is not like a zillion dollar job, but when Ikea opened in Red Hook, Brooklyn, where I'm from, I'm from New York, I'm in Miami Beach now, but when they opened in Brooklyn, maybe like 10, 12 years ago, they made a promise to the community of Red Hook, which is a black neighborhood, Red Hook houses, horrible, bad neighborhood at the time for gentrified, is that, you know, we're going to hire people from the neighborhood. And that's what they did. You know what I mean? So if you're trying to do that and you care about black people, bring in jobs that black people can get out of high school, making 50, 60 K where they can start a family, do what they want to do, have money on the side to put together for their dreams or whatever it is they want to do and not be a slave to, you know, college debt and, and the U.S. government trying to go, you know, go into, into debt going to college. Hey, hey, you should be up there, Benji, but we're, we're close to the end. I want to ask you something about, 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 about that second piece. On that second piece, you you did say something that's somewhat controversial and other people are going to be like, wow. But you talked about ways that you can give give people stuff that, that, that they might be uh, agreeable to. And one was helping people out. But if you're gonna do it, you gotta include white. It shouldn't be so so toxic and so. Oh well, yeah, it, it has gotta... to because, and unfortunately, right. But isn't part of it one other piece of that? Shouldn't you not give everybody money? So, so the uh, one of the problems I have with giving all. That's why in, in my piece I ask: Is it punitive or is it what is what what is old? Because I want to know: punitive. Are you gonna give everybody money? Like, like if you're really trying to help black people because they're struggling. Wouldn't it be logical to give the people the money that is struggling? Why would you give well, all, you know it, upper it, middle for, class and wealthy blacks money? For me, it wouldn't be an issue of giving anybody any money because the money thing is not real. I'm sorry, like no right. one's giving you money. That's not like we need to just drop that part. That's not real. I'm sorry. I want five million dollars too. I would love that, but that's not happening. We already talked about the math on that. The math ain't right. math, and that's not happening. But what I did say in my second piece about you know reparations and doing like a partnering um, with reparations as well as having like a Appalachian sort of like renewal, something like that. Because at the end of the day, Obama pissed the opportunity where it could have been just all Democrats. So you've got to go across the aisle. You've got to give Republicans something to be able to bring back home and say, hey, you know what I mean? For example, Sherrod Brown in Ohio, he's up for re-election 2024. If we're trying to get, you know, he is a, a Democrat, but he is over a state, a, a, a red state of Ohio. Give him something to vote for. Okay, we're doing reparations in black communities, but the people of East Palestine still ain't got nothing yet. The people in West Virginia, they need to have some sort of energy that they're making or something, whether it be coal or something, because we have to start making our own energy again. So, so you have to pair it with something that's going to work and get it across. This whole idea of, oh, well, we're going to get back on the white Neanderthals and we hate white, like that's never passing. And Democrats know that. So they're going to put forth things that are never going to pass. So when they don't pass, they can say, well, we try, but the big bad white folks, when you were not trying to make a deal. Our people in Congress represent us. We're not supposed to be the experts in this. We shouldn't be having these conversations. Our congressional black caucus should be like, yo, all right, black folks need stuff. We got to figure out a way to get across the aisle to be able to make this happen for our constituents. But they don't have to do that. All they got to do is George Floyd you to death. They know they're going to get their vote. That's Last what thing. I'm saying. Let's do something real that can really help Black people for real in a way that's sustainable and that we're not waiting for the next check from the government so our votes will just be counted toward the Democrats. That's Last what thing. I'm saying. What, 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 what do the Republicans do? What can they do? With well, all what, this, I mean, everything stacked up against them, obviously. So how do they well, turn Well, I the think tide? Republicans... Republican well, can do what made them successful under Trump, meaning follow those same policies, meaning that I think that what they can do as far as black people is 
communicate what they're actually trying to do better and combat the racial narrative. I think where Republicans F up, especially with the Trump administration, is that they don't see, they don't look at MAGA, talk to black folks and say, hey, how, how do black people fit into this MAGA thing? We already know the Democrats are trying to say that, oh, we're racist, we're this, we're that, we're other. We know that we're not that. We know that we don't hate black people. And like I said, we're not going to get all the black people because again, Victimhood is very sexy. It's very attractive. But you can pick off some black folks who are like, you know what? I know this reparation thing is not real. It sounds great. But I would like jobs in this country. I actually don't hate America. I would like, I would not like to see America blown to smithereens. You know, there are a lot of ways. And if you look at like, even like the whole LGBT push, when you look at, you know, um, men and women's sports, these are things that black people agree with. When you go on like the shade room and it's on site and things like that, I saw a post the other day where they were talking about Biden and how like black voters are not excited about Biden. And there were a lot of black people like, yeah, you know, he's doing all this gay stuff, all this women in, you know, men's, I mean, men in women's locker room. I'm not for this. But then you have the person say, well, if you don't vote for him, then it's just Jim Crow and the KKK and then with Trump and the Proud Boys. And my thing is like my thing to Trump's people, which I told Laura Trump, to her face, y'all got to do something about that. I even told Katrina Pierce, I mean, Pierce, whatever the girl, Katrina girl, the same thing. Like, if y'all are Black people supporting Trump, Pierce. and after three years of Trump, yeah. the railing narrative among Black people is that he's this white supremacist, then you guys aren't doing your fucking job. Because the least you could do as Black Trump people is get out there and impact actual Black people. Not sit around and jerk each other off on, you know, Newsmax and Fox and whatever. Go to the Breakfast Club. Go to Tasha K. Go to Lovely T. Go to where Black people are and don't be scared. If you're not a racist, then make the argument. Because my thing with, when I told Laura Trump, I said, yo, we need to go on the Breakfast Club. Because at the end of the day, they say in a Trump racist on there. And if there's no one representing Trump to say the opposite, then what do you expect black people to think? You can't be mad at black folks to feel like y'all are white supremacists if y'all ain't coming and saying something the opposite. All we see is like, you know, Candace Owens and people who are just not helping. They're who put in the forefront where there are real, actual black people like myself, like Shamika, plenty of other ones who can relate to regular black people and who are not afraid of having the real conversation. But if you don't go to where black people are, you can't expect your black people to support. Well, well, we will have to leave it there. I mean, this was fun. I will will end by saying the problem with your advice to Laura Trump and, 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 the, and the Trump administration, it sounds like it was good, is that they probably didn't get to respond. <laughs> <laughs> you never let them get a word in as wife. He's uh, Benji Irby, a political commentator and uh, Republican whisperer. Uh, Benji, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Land of the free and a home of the brave. God, get all of the praise. I got a country to save because I'm Patriot J and I'm saving a day.